Hello, everybody, and Hello. welcome to Coffee Class with Young Screenwriters. We're Hello. an online resource and community for up and coming screenwriters. And look who's back. Where? Yes. Who knew? Yeah. Is it this Who way? Knew? Oh my God, I there got it go. right the first time. I got it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, experience is so valuable. Anybody will wander in. <laughs> so, Alexi, Everyone what are we talking about today? Alexi, what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about one of John's favorite subjects, one of the things he is most known for amongst students. That is raising the stakes. Yeah. Gotta raise them. Gotta raise, raise them, the baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's, I mean, people are still going to be trickling in for a few minutes. So this is just let's go hard. Of, well, let's just, <laughs> let's just cut. Like we can say hi for a second. John, what have you been up to? Wait, I just hit comments and now wait. Oh, wait. I think I screwed up here. <laughs> we oh, can no, still see you and hear you. So what? Yeah. Uh, so what have what you been, have been up, up to, to, John? I've been, I've yeah. been, uh, I was just telling Adam, I, I just had my first semester back. Uh, at NYU, um, teaching in the classroom with students in the classroom, um, which was which was great. I love being back in the classroom and seeing them in person and interacting with them. Um, so so it was good good to be back. Um, it 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 was curious that uh, Adams asked me how was it different or better or worse. The the main thing was that there's a understandably based on the last two years there's a level of anxiety that, that I've never seen before with, with students just on a personal day-to-day -day basis. So that, um, uh, you know, the mental health days and the, and all of that, um, is re really impacting their lives. And it's, uh, it's a tough time. Makes sense. I heard NYU just closed too, because of Omicron, Omicron. Yeah. I mean, we are, we spiked, uh, I guess we really, I mean, um, the conversation that everybody's having is that there were Christmas parties and people went out and people wanted to have a go to a party and then it just, oh, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. haven't really ventured out. I feel like I would have intense social anxiety if I had to start seeing people again. I've been hidden away for a decade now. A <laughs> decade? <laughs> oh, because, because, so COVID has been two years and you've been, yeah, you just, yeah, you started early, yeah. I guess. It's uh, yeah. neatly slid, slid into your existing lifestyle. It did. Um, <laughs> it did. <laughs> Would you consider yourself? I'm just, and this is not a loaded question. You know, it's a loaded uh -huh. question when I say that. Would you uh -huh. consider yourself a monk or a mole? Ooh, mole. I will tell you now. I'm not a monk. Oh, but uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I, think we, I think we have an answer. Okay, thank you. There we go. <laughs> it's oh, a man. new Christmas movie, an agoraphobe. Christmas, you know. Uh, or, yeah, by the way, <laughs> by the way, that is a great. Oh, that's a great title. I don't know where you go with it, but that's a great title. No, I don't know where you go with it, but. <laughs> Let's try um, it. Let's do it. It's Home Alone, almost. That would have been COVID no, but he, compliant. He, he wanted to go on the trip. They just forgot about him. He did, but they didn't. So that would have been able. But agoraphobia to be shot means is uh, means like a fear of the outside. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, wait. We just John, John left. Well, John, uh, he'll come back. Log back in. Text him. Text well, him. I will. Um, why don't you first? I want to explain what the phrase "raise the stakes" means, just for people who what we're referring to at all when we talk about raising the stakes. While John comes back, I assume he'll have his own definition, but just to kind of orient people, Adam, do you have a way that you would explain stakes and why you want to raise them? Yeah. So. The reason why you want to raise the stakes is to basically the crude answer is you want to you want high retention in your story. You don't want people to zone out. You want people to stay engaged. Mm -hmm. And emotional stakes, external stakes, it's just and their um, exponential growth throughout the story is a sense of progress that while you're experiencing a story makes it worth sitting through. Like sort of like, oh, this is going somewhere. This is developing. This is going to be meaningful. If Here the is. stakes stay, back. Uh, Sorry. hey John, uh, I don't know how we to access my chat on this uh, iPad. So anyway, you, Alexi, I'll pull it up it. for you. Okay. So uh, where uh, were we? I'm sorry. So I was, ex I, uh, yeah. yeah. I asked Adam if he could give a brief explanation of like what stakes even are. Like, what are we talking about? Just to orient 
people yeah. before we get into and why it. it's important. And my definition of why it's important is basically it's to keep retention and interest in your story, because if yeah. stakes aren't accelerating, people won't have a sense of progress that oh this is worth developing. This isn't interesting. If you don't keep raising the level of emotional engagement of the characters, um, people zone out. Or if it's like, well, we've had the same type of problem over and over and over and over again. It's like, yeah, you can have uh, Bob can't find his pencil and he needs to write a letter. That's a terrible situation. But like, if it's just like, oh, now he can't find his stapler. It's like, well, it's the same type of problem. It's not, oh, he can't find his pencil. And now, you know, his wife served him divorce tape papers, you know, to be because he couldn't <laughs> write the letter in time. You know, like that's raising yeah. the stakes. It's a nonsensical uh, story, but it's the new type of problem. It's that that's more emotionally resonant as you reach the climax and character growth. Because I feel like the higher the stakes go, the closer you get to earning character growth. Yeah. And, but also and, just, and, and, oh, you can go ahead, John. Go. No, you, no, no. Uh, mine's short. I was just going to say, simply put, I think that stakes are the consequences for not achieving your objective or not succeeding. And mm. so it's just, all it is is just the consequences. And so it's like, what's at stake here? Hopefully it's something that matters because if we want to care about him finding the pencil, it needs to be more than just, then he can't doodle while he watches whatever. It needs to be like, or his he can't write the letter to save his marriage. You see, the stakes are higher in one situation than the other, just consequences. Yeah, and, and the stakes also, uh, I think all of that, these are great, great point of view about this. I, the other uh, thing is um, the stakes accelerate conflict. Mm -hmm. So the higher the stakes, the higher conflict. For instance, can I jump? Can I? Yeah. Jump? Let's make you okay. big. Go for it, man. So, Go for so, it. So, so for instance, let's say a. Uh, um, um, Let's say an old guy has three women who work in his office. And he says, I want to know which of you <laughs> loves me most. So that's interesting, right? But then if you just tweak it a little bit and you say, it's an old guy says to his three daughters, which of you loves me best? Then you got King Lear. Then you you the stakes are arisen because the 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 relationships are changed, intensified, and raised. Um, here's here's an now here's a I'm, I'll draw a parallel here that's absurd, but I think it, where I was thinking about this earlier. For instance, I'm going to go from King Lear to Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine, I think, is just a brilliant piece of work. I don't think. Shakespeare, by the way, but I think it's a great piece of work. But Little Miss Sunshine, they're all in the same family. So the stakes are pushed because the relationships are more intense, given grandfather, father, wife, son, uh, 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 brother-in-law, daughter. So the stakes are pushed because these relationships are inherently um, uh, very intense. Um, I don't know if any of you have been watching, if you haven't, I recommend it, uh, Succession. And Succession, which, by the way, is a variation on King Lear, but I think. But um, Succession is um, patriarch and children. And... What they've done is given them an enormous amount of money and with that comes power and then the stakes keep rising because only one person this goes back to shakespeare only one person can be king um, a lot of times in my students uh, when they're designing a story uh, they'll say well it's this guy and he works for this man and da 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 and whatever and 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 then sometimes I'll say, well, what if the man was his father? Well, then inherently, again, it just pushes everything. What if the man was his brother? Now you've got brothers against brothers in the conflict. So these are choices um, that you make early on with regards to internal relationships 
in the story internal relationships with the, with the characters and those choices um uh will lift stakes and therefore again um uh accelerate conflict so that's um the other thing is a little bit of a different tangent but sometimes students will say to me um this happens so frequently that it just it always kind of shocks me and it's a knee-jerk moment for me but a student say i will pitch a story idea and they'll say well yeah the protagonist's name is fred and he just kind of wants and i stop him if your protagonist just kind of wants something you don't have a movie you don't have a story if Fred, the protagonist, is willing to risk his life for the objective, then you've got a story. So um, it's a, it's a natural. I think it's a it's a, in human nature. It's I think it's fair to say it's natural to 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 resist and avoid conflict. We all do it. It's what you do every day. Uh, if you see a crazy person on the street, you change the side of the street, you avoid conflict. And, and one of our jobs as writers is counterintuitive that because writers, you have to find conflict. You have to create conflict. So it's never just kind of wants. It's always absolutely you must have life or death. And that's where, that's where the stakes start to rise. I'm gonna repeat myself just real quickly, but, but that, that goes back to, again, the choices you make with the relationships among characters, particularly with your protagonist, who those people are, what their relationships are, and um, um, and th those choices are really, really important because that's where the in inherently it's designed. That's why, I mean, you know, Cain and Abel, this is, you know, uh, father-son stories, mother-daughter stories, Lady Bird, these stories, they're, they're brilliant and they take us in and they're wildly entertaining because the conflict is, is, is there because of the complexity of relationships. Anyway, I'll stop babbling for a minute. Let's, so uh, here's a question from Nicole. She says, Hello, so would Nicole. you say that having familiar familial relationships in main storylines always raises the stakes better than just friends or strangers? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's somewhat broad. You can't do it all the time, but but um, um, let's take Whiplash for a, for a second. Now there is a father in the movie, but very minimally that is he used, really just an act three kind of. But but the 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 mentor antagonist, um, the, the teacher, um, becomes is king, he is God, he controls everything. So that that is not a father-son relationship, although you could argue it, it has the, uh, some of the characteristics of a, of a father-son relationship because uh, the young man who's trying to become a drummer and the teacher who, who holds the, king, or the keys to the castle, um, that dynamic is designed so it's inherently conflict. It's, it's, um, it's assistant and boss. It's uh, uh, um, slave owner and slave. These, these, see, I mean, when you start to design it, design the story, you want a relationship that already has a potential to blow up. Because that's where the conflict is. The conflict is in the blow up. Hope I answered that. I think you did. Let's see. Okay. And everyone, don't forget that we can pull any questions up on the screen. Adam, you're back. Yes, great. I, I, I have one thing to add. I have one thing to add to the family family relationship things. Like, yeah, well, I think it's all about context, right? Like, what is this person's normal world? Because I feel like there's also a glut of bad stories that intent that like artificially will like have messages about like, oh, be a good father, be a good son, be a good whatever, like in a ways that just sort of like blindly follow cultural norms, 
without mm -hmm. really like it artificially raises the stakes. Like, yeah, okay, this is a father son story, you know, but that doesn't necessarily need to be every story. To no, like, no, 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 no. And I, yeah, but there is a push for for in like <laughs> to make everything about family. I think in uh, and I think we we actually there's a missed opportunity. I think for stories about found family. Well, and I also think you know I'll, I'll move away from because I, I, I yeah I didn't. As you know, I wasn't suggesting they all have to be familiar. No, I was talking about the 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 the, uh, the comment more than oh, what you okay. said. But the the other thing is the the um, uh, in terms of the stakes, where the sometimes it's just a, it's just a, a slight adjustment um, given who the protagonist is and what he or she wants. And then it's a slight adjustment. Um, again, I'm sorry to, I, I, you'll hear me say this repeatedly you know, again and again, but my students will say, I'll say, and by the way, how old is the protagonist? And they'll go, oh, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> how can you not know? So by the way, if the protagonist is a 12 year old girl that's different than a 24 and i've had actually had students who will start off with well she's 24. oh well then she's got some while she's got some maturity she's got some oh but if she's 14 then everything with everything will be inherently difficult because she has no power source she has hmm. she and and then that put so that choice um, is a wonderful choice, you know, and it's a really important choice um, to push again to the stakes ultimately being in the third act that it's a matter of life or death. It's like if Juno or Wizard of Oz or something like that went to bone, just yes. to hit all, all my favorites, if all those were like a 40 year old woman or a 35 year old yep. woman as the protagonist. It would be an entirely different story, a completely different movie, and and not and would lack. I mean, that's why Dorothy's I'm twelve or whatever. I mean, Judy Garland looks about thirty six, but you know she's supposed to be twelve years old. <laughs> I don't know how old she looks, but but you know because because when she gets to this new world, how you got to say? I mean, how in the hell is she going to make it out of there? Mm -hmm. So to pivot into the next part of the conversation, sort of, you know. The stakes, the more we can make things life or death, the better, right? In terms of like the general situation. But I also think that like in like the minute to minute reality of like a scene, everything should feel life and death, even if it's mm -hmm. not. Like that's kind of drama, right? Like it's not yeah. really drama if the characters aren't like, don't really care about what's happening, even if it's minutia, even if it's like, I don't think you deserve that promotion. Like the emotional intensity, or I should say the emotional engagement with characters going after what they want and having obstacles. So what I would define as drama. And like, there's sort of a, I feel like sometimes it can devolve into things that just randomly happen if there isn't like a core emotional life or death motivation behind what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, things that happen, don't get me started on things that happen, scenes of things that happen in, in scripts. I mean, it's just the bane of my existence. So, so, yeah. But Mr. Warren, Mr. Warren, this really, this really happened. Nobody <laughs> cares. No one cares. <laughs> um, and Alexa, you've heard me say this about a thousand times. But the scene that I get, uh, I mean, just you know, I can't even read them. Um, is two girls sitting in a coffee shop talking about a boy, or two boys sitting in a coffee shop talking about a girl, and they say, "But Mr. Warren." It's authentic. The dialogue is real. No one cares. Now, you take those same two boys and you say they're roommates. Okay, let's just let's play with this for a second. They're roommates. Okay, Adam, and they come. Yeah, in I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. With me. And they come in and they sit down and they go. Hey, good. Did you you got the rent check in? Yeah, I got the rent check in. Good. Cool. We're fine. Yeah. We're not fine. 
I want to know, did you fuck Mary? <laughs> why, 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 why are you asking me that? Did you fuck Mary? Now, now we've got a scene. Right? Now yeah. it's get the hell out of my apartment. Hey, man, look, man, I don't. It's two o'clock in the morning. What are you talking about? I mean, I, I, I don't have an apartment. I, I, get out, 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 out. It's a blizzard out. outside. It's a blizzard. Oh, that's <laughs> it's, always, it's, it's always anyway, Mary. It's, <laughs> it's always Mary. She's such a slut. But. <laughs> oh, my God. So, but you know, but, like, but, there's so, also but, so many ways you can go. Like, in terms of like, that scene would read completely different if uh, one of the roommates was in love with the other one, right? Secretly, like, that's but, like what I'm th that, so, like, and those are decisions that sort of you think, like, well, okay, that's automatically better than them just talking about some third person yes. without drama. But if you bring in like, oh, they both are competing for the same person, they're both competing for. What if only one of them is actually competing for the other one? The other is trying to get with the guy. You know, like there's so many things you could there's do. There's so many ways you can go. You know? But again, it's it's different, Adam. I think this is in keeping with what you're saying. It's different than things that happen. Yes. And yeah. that's talking about yeah. a tuna fish sandwich. Should I have the tuna fish or should I have the grilled cheese? That's different that now what we've done is just add a drama to it. Right? Yeah. So and then, here's and then interesting. the interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to pull up an interesting question real quick. Uh, I, it was, I was afraid it was going to be for Mary, who said that she had <laughs> <laughs> close, not quite. Mayra uh, Mara says, "Would you recommend to write things first and go around and play with age slash relationships to raise the stakes, or have this completely set before writing?" I would recommend the latter, because here's yep. what's going to happen. If you if you start to let me just look at this again. Okay, so so let's say you you start writing, which I don't recommend. Um, you're gonna find unless you're very very unique, you're gonna find that you fall in love with your writing, and you're gonna find. I'm sorry, my hands are in the frame. You're gonna find. I look like Jeff Goldblum. Uh, is that his name? No, you're you're working you're working it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just speaking for. So, so you you find that you, you, it, traditionally writers you know before knowing where the story is going start writing stuff writing scenes they fall in love with them and then they find themselves writing around that scene to make it fit in the movie when it never belonged in the movie in the first place yeah and so and that that i've been doing this for 40 years is that right yeah god it's pathetic um and that is is something that is um uh, a standard writing problem um so if you identify these things you start to, and we're going to talk about something later about a story and what initiates a story and how the process plays out a little bit but again to answer your question is nail down as many of the pieces of story elements of story as possible before you start writing um it'll, it'll give you a better um uh, blueprint for where you're going so for anyone just now meeting john john is oh. not even slightly in the panther camp not even a little john is in the what it's called pants or like writing by the seat of your pants it's it's called oh, pants or yeah. planner Planting novels yeah 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 uh. john is not that <laughs> Fully... I actually think very few, very uh, very few screenwriters are pantsers. Yeah. I think that's more common with novels. Because um, you have to know how much, like how long it's going to take in your film, and you have to like, I mean, it can only be so long so, to a degree. You can know? I can I give yeah. my spiel on on? I totally agree. You know, you don't want to like the metaphor. I like to think of is like you know the best like movie stories feel like a piece of string that you start pulling. And pulling until it sort of gets tightened and then you want to see when it can break and the breaking yeah, is when like the it. character is forced to change right and yeah, good. if you keep if you start just like coming up with characters and you just start writing scenes with them you'll start like a bunch of strings and you'll never mm -hmm. 
you'll, you'll never be able to really get have time to tighten one out and like snap it in a way that people care because the thing is the que- you want to create questions with the with the audience right about like oh is bob going to get with mary is bob going to get with you know you know like that's a string you're pulling like what will they do to get what they want oh you know uh I don't know. It's just it's well, just, and then tuna fish or grilled it, cheese is a completely right. irrelevant string, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, so, like, it's a whole thing about the, if you have a whole story about these these uh, these two guys in Mary love triangle. It's all about their relationship, and then we just sort of start talking about um, Mary's dad and his and his life at his at his job. You know, like oh, or just or like another aspect of their lives that has nothing to do with the core drama. You know, yeah. it's not irrelevant. It's not relevant. This is your this is your quote. This is your moment. And his mom has cancer. <laughs> oh right, right. By the way, I have one. Of, I have one of those students out. But but Adam, before I forget, <laughs> and God knows I do forget quickly. Um, Spider Man. Mm. Spider Man, beautiful design, beautiful movie. I'm talking about the first one, but but um, the second one too. The father, the father and the son dynamic and then the father dynamic with the son's best friend yeah and then mary jane and the relationship between between the two boys they're all fraught fraught with with complication and they all are raising the stakes because peter parker wants mary jane but he can't have her because mary jane loves handsome whatever that other kid's name harry. is harry that thank you harry Harry's father right. likes Peter Parker better than he likes Harry. I mean, stakes are really high, and that's in a comic book. So I guess to well, think about these these strings again and to remember some of the things that John has always that are like locked in my head from me <laughs> from class is I apologize. No, it's great. Is the the thing that we're talking about is that John's one of his line is no cancer beats, which is basically oh. like if you're gonna give. If you're doing a story and then just to raise the stakes, you're going to make a random character have cancer. That doesn't stretch your, the main string at all. It doesn't put any tension on the main string. It's a completely other string. If you're going to have any string. cancer, you should have it in the first 15 pages. And it should no, be relevant. Yeah. Or the yeah. focus, you know? It's a big deal. That's Probably a huge <laughs> That's a huge story. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had a class, I think it was like two or three years ago. And uh, they were pitching their, uh, you've heard, uh, so Alexi's building on this, which, you know, but they're pitching their stories. And then they get to the end of the pitch and they said, and his mother has cancer. And then the next kid would pitch and it was about, uh, you know, da, 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 and his mother has cancer. And so finally I said, listen, no more cancer. I'm tired of this shit. No more cancer. In this, in, 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 nobody's allowed to have cancer. And it became a big joke, but not, but. But the other, Alexi, yes, you're absolutely right. The other thing is I've got a student now who's doing this thing. He's got this good story shaped about this guy. Anyway, it does not important. But and, he, and, and the guy's got a real objective. Everything's fine. And he said, and he's going through a divorce. And I went, wait, wait, what? what, what, what why? Is, and, and then I said it to the young man. Finally, I said, let me ask you something. Why is that? Why is your protagonist married? And he long paused and he said, mm, I don't really know. I said, so could you remove the wife who he's going to divorce from, which is not organic to the story at all? And would it change the story? And I knew he was, I, I knew he, it was killing him. And finally he said, no, I guess not. So then get rid of it. That's a great think- breakup line. Sorry, but you're just not organic to my life story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that, I think what happens a lot of times is that um, people start with a character that is dealing with something that is really, really personal to them as a writer. Yeah. And then yeah. as they build out this story, like it seems like to me, probably one of the earliest choices this guy made was he's a guy going through a divorce. Yeah. And then sort of building out this story and it became something else where that's no longer relevant. But if that's like the emotional heart of why, of like the way you built your character, you have to make a decision then. Do I pursue the story that I've been building or do I make that so critical to his character 
that it can't be separated and basically write a completely different story. Like he could do a story about a guy going through a divorce, but that's a different movie. I right? made a like, lot of money on, on this divorce thing years ago. Years ago, I was writing this movie <laughs> for Dino De Laurentiis. What? Why are you laughing, Alexis? Wait, just, <laughs> it's because it was so obscure that I would say. The way that you phrased it, it was like I made a lot of money on this divorce thing. I'm like, well, dang, John. Yeah, I did. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. Because <laughs> it's so anyway. This guy, I think his name is Steve Deutsch, and he ran. He was head of he was head of production for Dino De Laurentiis's company, and I was writing a movie for Dino, and um, and I wrote the script and everything, and, and it was it was actually a pretty good script, and um, and Steve Deutsch was going through a divorce, so he comes in, uh, he got script first draft, come in, and he, I go in for a notes meeting, and he says, I got a great idea. I said, and it, whenever they say I got a great idea, you go, oh god, oh I'm in so much pain right now. <laughs> And because that means they're in love with it. And so I said, yeah, what is it? And he said, the guy, the guy, buddy, buddy, the protagonist. I said, yeah. He said, he should be going through a divorce. Now, I happen to have known that Steve Deutsch was going through a nasty divorce. So I said, I don't really, I, I don't know. Uh, really? He goes, John, trust me. This will work. This is great. So I could tell there was no moving him off the mountain. So I got home, I called my agent, and I said, this jerk wants me to write this guy, write it, do it, rewrite it, and this guy being divorced. And, and my agent said, what are you gonna do? And I said, I'm gonna do it, but charge him everything we can get. Just charge him, <laughs> kill the guy on this, get as much money as you can. So he goes, okay, fine. So, and to see Deutsch's credit, I wrote the draft, it's just a piece of shit. And I, and I turned it into him and he called me and I went in for another moment. I was scared to death that he was gonna say this is great. I go in for another meeting and he goes, the uh, divorce thing? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> and I said, no, not at all. Not at all. He goes, okay, can you go back to the original draft? And I said, yeah, I can do that. That's great. Sorry. You might as it's, well it's, get your money. Adam, no, I do go off on my tangents, but it's kind of funny, right? No, it's, it's a great anecdote about uh, people just love to pee on things, you know? <laughs> That's what it is. It's like dogs. I said, oh, this is my territory. Boom. This is the Boom. project. I can really get my ideas on. Yeah. yeah. Let me just pee on your script. Yep. <laughs> and you know, so thinking about like raising the stakes and familial relationships and things like that. Yes. I think as that, we are. As we are. That's why Disney kills so many parents. Oh. Because God. like the what's a relationship? A how many like how in, like important is your relationship with your mom when you also have a dad we can make it a lot more important if we kill your dad and now you only got the mom and then now there's a lot more stakes in this relationship with the mom and um right. yeah absolutely right. and you dissipate the energy if you if you if you use both parents disney only uses you know they kill they always kill at least one and but because two you you diffuse the um relationship Mm -hmm. If I ever get an assignment at Disney, I will pitch that uh, we kill the fathers. That's a twist. <laughs> you say driving, driving over here for this meeting, I killed the father. That's See, that was great about Spider-Man. Uh, it's Uncle Ben, you know? It feels a little yeah. more original. It's like, how, but how many Uncle Bens have to die? And, and by the way, you know? they kill him too. Yeah. yeah. Kill them no, they kill him. Yeah, no, they, that's, why, that's why I brought they it up. It's like, and I will, and also this remind. This reminds me of another note that I remember you giving, which is sometimes people will say something like, Don't you wish you could erase everything that, yeah, go ahead. I think it's good advice. It's like, and they're one of 12 siblings. And it's I like, I love this. <laughs> you remember yeah. giving that advice? <laughs> I do. I remember. It's I like, remember why? the girl in your class, but I remember the young lady who said, and she's got five sisters. And I said, why why would why would your why would they have what in what capacity do they work these five sisters and she says well i don't know but i like ensembles oh that's like a producer like heart attack you know <laughs> yeah it's like wait 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 it's great and and by the way I, i'll go back for a second just briefly to to uh, little miss sunshine all of the characters are used for story. 
And that's what's amazing. Yeah, they put those, everybody, they put the family in the van. They all have a story responsibility. And that's what you, that's what you're looking for. That's what you're aiming for when you decide one father, one mother, whatever you're going to do. Does that character have a story responsibility? I, I just want to add one thing, sort of like, sort of choices like, oh, he has 12 brothers or 12 sisters can work if it's justified in the story. If it's cheaper, and it's by the important dozen. to who they are, right? Yeah. Like I, I immediately yeah. thought of uh, the Paul Thomas Anderson film. I'm not a big fan of it over his other films, but Punch Drunk Love, the Adam Sandler movie, yeah. he has 12 sisters, and the whole point of that is that he feels repressed and he has no voice. And when we goes to yes. the party, with they all talk over him, and they're all like they're they're yeah. basically one yeah. character. They all talk <laughs> at once, all at him, and he yeah, feels like correct. he's a shell in his shell, okay, right? So like they, it's a story thing, and they've got a story responsibility. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> little Sounds women, like a... little women, the same thing. You know, they yeah. all got. Purpose. If there are a bunch of sisters, but it's not that one's just there in the corner. They adding all nothing. have a very distinct reason to be in the movie. Yeah. yeah. So, this is sort of an interesting sort of. This is what I was. I want. I talked about this earlier, but like, so much of like the choices of like what are like stories worth seeing and people want to see or like have to do with like our limited local culture too like american family values are so often like the canvas of american movies and mm. that might not be the canvas of another culture yeah which sees father mother son daughter sibling relationships differently like differently. in america there's there's a very specific context for those relationships and movies about those things are going to be colored in a particular way. I think that's something you should consciously make too, because I, I think in America, we don't have enough films about friendship. Hmm. Like as a culture, like I feel like we, we always make it like, Oh, it's less it's important than the, the husband or the wife. It's less important than the kids. It's like the friends are always like the distraction. They're always the obstacles or they're the idiot you have to be in the car with, you know? Um, <laughs> so I guess, the reasons I it's one of the reasons I love Superbad, because it, mm. it is, it's a yeah. movie, thematically, it's about friendship. Yeah. And it's, if you're going to do that, it's like, when you rely on cultural expectations to set up relationships, it can work. Like, you can say, they're a mother and a daughter, and now you have a canvas to paint on. If you say they're friends, then you as the writer have to, have to show what that means to them because it can mean a lot of different things we don't necessarily right, know what that right, looks like right that's good point. so the familial relationship is great because it's like a it's a shorthand for something and you can build on it really quickly and really easily if you're going to do friends are they like found family friends are they yes. neighbors like what kind of friends are they and it's what more on you yeah, yeah it, you can make it as important as siblings but you have to make it that it's you don't have the automatic that's right you know, that's right you the given you have to consciously be you have to be aware that you're designing it so that it's it's it it, it, it it's intensified there's yeah yeah there's substance to these relationships yeah. so something i want to bring up um which is sort of like the other side of the things happen versus drama like we're talking about like macro story decisions but like actually on the page so often you could have like a great dramatic scene that's only 40 percent like or you could have the potential for a great dramatic scene that's only 40 percent drama and then like 30 percent talking leading up to or like oh like people getting out of cars going to places people talking about things that like the exit late uh sorry the enter late exit early sort of thing you know is all about getting to drama and cutting out the things that happen because there's always going to be like things that happen in a movie off screen, right? Like you imagine like when we compress time that, yeah, they went on a road trip and we don't see every time they go to urinate in the woods, you know? And there's so <laughs> many scripts that have like, that is the extra information. Like you can just cross out and be like, you don't need that. <laughs> oh yeah. God. I mean, by, I mean, you're hitting on a whole coffee class section on, on what, to leave out yeah and mm. it's so important to and to go back to your thing um 
this is what really happened. Now, how much of it can we take out? Because when you get down to something that's really lean and mean, and it's a really strong narrative piece, um, all of that fat goes away. And um, so it's, 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 a very, it's a very sophisticated storyteller who understands how to edit before they put it on the page. Um, uh, we, we, have a, we have a good friend, in, uh, this couple, and, and the wife um, is, I, I think, might be, I don't, I don't know everybody in the world, but she might be the worst storyteller in the world. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she just is the worst storyteller in the world. And we see them, they don't live in New York, we see them four times a year maybe. And inevitably we're at dinner and she'll say, did I tell you about it? And I think I'm going to fucking kill myself. If she starts telling a story, she just, and I'm all, I'm, I'm, I would never do this, although I might. I'm all, I, I thought maybe I should say to her, and this is so obnoxious, but I might do it. But I'm all, I thought maybe I'll just say to her, Pam, let me, just exp- let me just tell you how to tell a story. Let me just explain. Cause you're the worst. You're the worst storyteller I've ever heard. And when you watch well, a story, I, I think about throwing myself out the window. And so, because she just puts in everything and she was wearing beige pants. What do beige pants have to do with it? Not a damn thing, but she tells you, don't tell me about the pants. Don't tell me about the pants. So it's, <laughs> sorry. That's like an out of episode of Blair. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it pushes my buttons, man. What? Curb your enthusiasm. Is that a curb your enthusiasm? That, no, no, it sounds like a curb your enthusiasm. He has a whole, he had a whole bit in one of the new seasons about middlers, people who should people who are great conversationalists, so you should keep at the middle of a dinner party. You never want somebody who's like bad at being in the middle. Oh, that's because great. Because they can't facilitate conversation. Oh, that's, um, great. Yeah. that's great. I love and He that. calls out this guy says, you're not a middler. You're not a middler. <laughs> Let him sit here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah, I kind of have to. We're, we have to avoid this couple because she's such. A- <laughs> <laughs> or you just tell wait, John. Or you just tell her, and you stop getting invited over. You know, that's not a bad. <laughs> either way, yeah, <laughs> it's a win situation. <laughs> I mean, just you really go. I'm gonna jump out the car window. There are worse things than alienating people. I've I've found. There, that's there true. Are, yeah, there yeah. are worse things. There are worse things. There are worse things. Um, you know that reminds me of the other what, storytelling what, what, thing what, that. What the saying? other storytelling thing that that stru- that gets on my nerves, besides like, giving too much information, is when someone tells you the same thing over and over in the story. Like, tell a story, and then they want to make sure mm-hmm. that you got it, so they go back and they tell it again. And they say, like, and he said this. Like, he really said this. I went in there, did this, and he said this. And then keeps doing it over and over to, like, really hit that point. And I feel like that translates to um to screenwriting about how like about are you telling the same point over and over especially in like character development scenes you know it's like have you already told us that this is that they're like a witty whatever kind of person and now you're telling us right. 17 other times right. um so just as another point of yeah comparison. can you defend can you defend why this beat is in the story. Mm-hmm. You you have to be able to defend every beat. Yeah. Yeah. And every line. Like I, I read a lot of scripts, especially people who are just learning, where like the dialogue could be great. The, the story's idea can be good, but like it's written in such a way where, you know, they're describing what the paint on the walls looks like. They're telling me what everybody's outfits is. It's like uh, and the, the piece of advice I give, which I didn't come up with, uh, I forget where it comes from, but is basically, if you want to start a scene, just tell us one great detail that shows us the mood and then get to the good shit. You know, like, that's yeah. a great, that's a great piece of advice. <laughs> I have this exercise, yeah, I, I have this exercise in class that I use. I tell, there are a couple stories, you guys have heard probably, but that I, and I'm not going to tell them now, but, but th- there are a couple stories that I tell that are based on true, true events. And um, um, 
And at the end of one of these particular stories, I say, by the way, you're the story, you know, just heard the story. You know, and I'll say, and the woman in the story, uh, the objective, um, what color were her eyes and what color was her hair? And it's fascinating because they'll go, oh, she's blonde. Um, she's blonde. No, she's a brunette. I think, um, I think she was a, I think she was a brunette. I think mm -hmm. she had blue eyes. I'm pretty sure. And then I, and I, and they go, okay, so what is it? I said, I said, she was stunning. Mm -hmm. So all we need in that story, I'm not going to belabor the story, but all we need in that story is to know that the, the woman in the question is stunning, beautiful. Then the audience brings whatever they want, whatever they think stunning is. Blonde hair, blue eyes. No one would be described as stunning. I'm, no one has ever I, described me as stunning. It's actually about you. <laughs> funny you should mention that. <laughs> You're <laughs> writing about me? Shit. <laughs> but it's kind of funny that, that but, all, but all I need yeah. in that telling is stunning, then leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about, you know, anyway. It's because if, if it's important to the story. Then I would have said it's a, blue it's eyes. A, the, you read, well, you know, if it's important to the story that they have blue eyes, like in Harry Potter, it's important that he had his mother's eyes because people talk about it constantly. Right. right. Mm -hmm. That's like, right. That's a that's detail. Right. Important. But I don't really, I don't think I rem I mean, that's a novel. It's a little different. But in a screenplay, you wouldn't focus on anything that's not about like perception and relationships, right? Like if you're going to tell us something about, tell us something about how, what their class is, if it comes up in the story. So it's a story about class. I want to know something that would tell me their class. Right. But mm -hmm. if they're not, if the story's not about that, then it doesn't really matter. Like, tell right. me something about, like, that'll give me a sense of, like, who the character is and how they interact with other people. Um, beautiful, but yep. she doesn't know it, right? <laughs> oh, my God. No. Sorry, that's the cliche. That's the, the Twitter of uh, uh, men writing women sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, um, you're right. Yes, 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 yes. Right. <laughs> So, like, I guess that would be my note for that is in John's story, it does matter that she's stunning. But if it doesn't matter, don't make her don't. Why say it? If right. it, it matters and what matters in John's story is that the woman is stunning. It doesn't matter that she has blue eyes, brown or blue eyes, brown hair, blonde hair, whatever it is. The only thing that matters is for this story. It does matter that she's beautiful. If there's a story where. It doesn't matter what she looks like at all. It doesn't matter that she's really, really hot. Don't just say she's hot because you want a hot person in your story. That's which is the, the default of Hollywood, and that's that's yes. a terrible you can thing. Assume we assume that past, if your yeah. movie's going to get made, they want someone she's hot in the role. Like that's just how it goes. So we don't need you to say, "And she's hot." Just assume. Assume that's that's the baseline. Yeah. Do you know what would be a great character description? Like uh, somebody says, he's like, he looks like a character actor. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Giamatti gets hired immediately. Right. <laughs> Do you have any any chat stuff? No. Um, no? just people just people like commenting on what we're talking about. I figured uh, now might be a good time, John, if you wanted to talk about um the creative process, your idea that you had. Okay, so yeah. Um, by the way, I've never tried this before, but we'll we'll run a flagpole see if it works. So a couple weeks ago, um, oh God, there I am again. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in class, and the student, which I kind of just, I I I, man, I managed not to laugh out loud, but the student um, said to me, uh, in all earnestness, um, Mr. Warren, could you um, would you mind could you uh, could you explain the creative process? It's a fairly, you know, not, first of all, I'm not qualified to explain it. Secondly, can anybody explain it? And thirdly, how many weeks do we have? But, um, but I thought, you know, part of my job here is to do my best to answer these questions. So I really was winging it. And this came out, of, and the, the, part of the answer is it can come from anywhere. So here's what happened. So I said, well... I can tell you this, it can, it can come from anywhere, and it frequently does, but then you have to say, is this kernel, is this piece, is this notion or this moment, is it worthy of a story, and, and, and do I know the right questions to ask of this story to begin to shape it? 
So I said to this uh, young man, I said, you know, it's curious. I said, let me just try this. I, I can tell you that uh, a few years ago, my wife and I were at a dinner party and um, this woman at the party who was kind of wacko and kind of crazy and, and loud and everything. And she was a middler, I think, Adam. But anyway, um, and she said, oh my God, the craziest thing happened. The craziest thing in the world happened. And Jim, should I tell him what happened? And Jim's her husband, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I tell her. And the guy's clearly just fed up with her. And she goes, well, and she was a flight attendant and she had been, which is odd also, but anyway, she and she had been out of town and she came home from, um, from a trip and she'd be gone a couple of days and she came home and she was emptying out the dishwasher and she found a wine glass with lipstick on it. And so she re reasoned that her hu husband was having an affair and she called her best friend and talked about it and da da da. And it started to gain uh, momentum and traction and she became, and she was very distressed uh, to, to find out that Jim, her husband, was sleeping with someone and then had them over to, had that person over to their house um, while she was out of town. Um, and then later when she confronted Jim, Jim explained that while she had been gone, he had been eating takeout and that he hadn't run the dishwasher and that the lipstick on the wine glass was her lipstick. And when she further examined it, she realized that to be true and that she's just this wacky woman out of her mind. So that story, which I was told years ago at this dinner party, I just thought, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about it years and years and years. And then there it was, I was trying to explain this young man, uh, the, the creative process. And I thought there's a key there. That's, that is clearly Adam and Alexa, you're going to laugh. That is clearly an inciting incident that incites the character of the woman who we'll call Lizzie. Her real name is Marty. Anyway, it will, well, uh, that it incites her to act. It incites her to find out who the mistress is and what to do about it. That initiates action. So I began, and then, and, the, and, and so I said to the young man in the class, I said, does that, you see how that kernel, that nothing moment, um, based on something that happened, but, you know, just a story, a story that was told, and laughed and everybody laughed. Oh God, you, you're so crazy, Marty. Um, uh, but I was sitting there thinking, wow, that is, that's a moment that could, and what happens, what happens if she takes it further? And what happens is if in fact, um, there is a mistress. Um, and I began to play with the idea um, and I played with the idea, what's the first thing you would do? Well, the first thing you would do is call your girlfriend and then meet for coffee and say, this is what's going on. And the girlfriend would say, I knew it. I knew he was fucking around. So I began to build on that story, just kind of, and this is the wonderful thing about creativity, just kind of having fun. It just, it was it, it, tremendous fun to play with these elements and that, and that, and that, oh, you know what she should do? She should call her ex-boyfriend who she knows doesn't have a, a pot and say, I want to hire you to follow somebody. So she hires her ex-boyfriend to follow, to follow. I've made, I've made the guy, I may turn it back, but right now at the moment, or the way it is right now, the guy is, she's, is not her husband. Jim is not her husband. Jim's simply the guy she's living with, who also is very wealthy. And now she hires her boy, ex-boyfriend to follow Jim, to find out who Jim's seen. Then I'm pushing it a little bit, and I'm not sure this is going to work, 
but I'm going to push her and make her a little imbalanced, not a little, a lot imbalanced. And for her to realize that the woman who's trying to steal her guy, um, is going to destroy her life. I've also, this goes back to something we were talking about just a minute ago. I've made her about 42 years old and she's been a flight attendant for 25 years and her knees are shot and she can't do any longer and she doesn't have any money left. And if, if she and Jim are kaput, she's because she knows she's not going to be able to do, work as a, light, a flight attendant for more than a couple more years. So now her stakes are, the stakes are raised. The stakes are raised because she has no livelihood. Jim is, her lifeline. Um, so what I was suggesting to Adam and Alexi earlier is uh, I, I, I played with the idea and I think it's a short story. I've written a first draft of the short story. And what I would like to suggest is that in three weeks or something, Alexi, Adam, you guys can tell me when it's convenient. Um, I will send the short story. It's about, I think it's going to be about 20 pages. I will send it and if, if, if you have the time, all of you are welcome to, or not, not obliged, of course, to read it. And then we can discuss whether or not it works, what parts work, what parts don't work, why I made the choices I made in the story. But again, it's, it's, the, it's the moment of inspiration, which is a story that was told at a dinner party that was just kind of ridiculous. And to take that moment and build so, um, if, you know, if, if people think that might be interesting, I'd be happy again, I'm going to do, a, um, a couple, I, I've only done a first draft on it. It's about 20 pages, but I'm going to do a couple a polish on it. And, and, um, I think it might be an interesting way to look at story in a creative process. So Alexi, Adam, what do you, um, I think it's a great I idea. The, I'd love I think to the idea you. of her, uh, the whole thing about the dishwasher is like the key, like that for me is the story like that's it, like oh there's something that because it's about misunderstandings it's about distrust and that distrust being the foundation of their marriage if it goes away yeah. right her livelihood's gone right like that core is as some, there's something there for sure yeah mm -hmm. i mean and that was what's fun about being a writer is that you're sitting there you're hearing some ridiculous story and you go oh god oh god this could get this could get bad there's so many ways you could go with it too. Like the immediate thought I had was, what if the what if the 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 mark on the glass was from her husband wearing her lipstick? That's what I thought too. That would yeah. be interesting. Well, not, it, that, it, the, way, the whole story, well, it, because the whole story. I mean, it depends what you. At the end of the day, what you want to say about their relationship and marriage is what the ending is going to be, right? Like well, so. Adam, you, yeah. You hit it right on the head because what I've come to, and this is again part of what, what I think happens with with writers is I that piece, which I I okay, found right. inspirational, you know, that piece, then built on it. And then as I was playing with the idea, as I was building it out, I began to um, what you're getting to is to come to the theme. And I, I'm not, I don't want to tell you the theme, but, but, but we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, as I came to it, I realized, oh, now I know what about this story piqued my interest and why I took it where I took it. And I'm not sure that the short story will work. I'm, it's, it's, but it, I think it's, but I know that the choices are worth, I think the choices are worth discussing because they were all made with in intention and purpose. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I love I, that makes sense. I just go back. What? I think the, 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 the only thing I would, I would be careful of is, you know, going into like playing into sexist tropes about like, you know, expectations of wives who are dependent on their husband, because there's like, there's it's something to be said about her distrust in their relationship. And like, you don't want it to be like, oh, she was wrong or she should be punished or like, if she fails, it should be because of her agency and the choices she makes. 
And I think that's that's really important in this story. Or flip it. Oh yeah, make it about the husband who you know who thinks his wife <laughs> is cheating. But that but then the dish then you lose the lip the lipstick thing. Yeah, but this is the beauty. Oh, she could be no, she could be cheating on him with another woman. I guess you know. Yeah, and it's that, not her lipstick. She's never had it. He doesn't see it around. It's completely not her. There's oh, so many God. ways you can go with this. The beauty of the creative process. The this is the, because you can you you can take this story. You can take that that key element, that inciting incident, and you give it to twelve writers. You get twelve stories. So and, there's some and, two, yeah yeah. There are two really good questions um, I, I want to get to before we leave. Uh, the first one's older, uh, which is uh, from Maxim. In many fantasy shows, like The New Wheel of Time, it is always about saving the world from evil and stuff. And yet the stakes feel so low. How to fix that? So, so I also want to, yeah. can I pull in this one too? Because I would say that these are part of the same question. Yes. Is there, which Michelle says, is there any value in low stakes stories so right. for the first one as i as i watched seven episodes of wheel of time uh, because i read the books as a kid so i had a nostalgic value and it's just terrible but um <laughs> it's not a good show um but the reason is the reason why it feels so low stakes even though they're saving the world is we don't give a shit about any of the people we don't know who they are and like yeah they showed like they showed us oh his his what he killed his wife Yes. So what? I didn't get him. to. See, he doesn't say anything, you know? Oh, you know, like, like they have five characters or actually really seven characters. We're trying to bond with in the first hour. They show us a little bit about every single one of them. And there's not enough time of them interacting or doing anything uh, where you don't really care about them. It's just a bunch of things happening to them and they're reactive the whole time. Like there's so many reasons yeah. why it feels like low stakes, <laughs> right? Low stakes, I meaning would... nobody gives a shit. So the reason why I, I thought to tie those two questions together is because I would say, no, there's no value in low stakes stories, but that doesn't mean it has to be something that is actually like in your everyday life, you'd consider a high stakes situation. Like if it, it goes back to like Adam pencil thing, like technically not getting the pencil is a, like, it's not the same thing as like, getting the vaccine that's going to save the world or whatever. You know, it's not like something that is inherently really, really high stakes, but you make it so. You make it matter to this character a lot. And so you up the stakes with the relationships and what it means to them. And then the same way, Wheel of Time, we don't yet care if these people live or die. So we don't care if they save the world or not. We have no reason to care. They've lowered the stakes, even though they had such a strong base. You know, like they, it's literally saved the world and we couldn't care less because to us, all these people could die and we wouldn't care. Yeah, it's personal stakes versus world stakes. And um, I, yeah, you go ahead. I don't, I, I don't know this wheel of time. I don't know the show, but. Uh, it's but the I new Amazon show. That. Huh? It's the new Amazon show. Yeah. But I was going to say that, um, in, in Alexi, to your point, which is really well taken in making us care, it's authenticity. To, to write an authentic character. Um, uh, Jane Campion's new film, um, uh, Power of the Dog, which is just, by the way, she breaks all the rules and it's, it's just extraordinary. But the, the characters behave in very contrary fashions to what you would think, they, how they would behave. And they're so authentically drawn that we believe them throughout. There's no question that these people are real. I went back, right after I saw that film, I went back and saw her film, um, The Piano, and same you know, you're in the hands of a real artist there that she's so authenticity and characters. Authenticity goes a long way towards making us care. You know, Oscar Schindler, we we care about that guy. We know who he is. He's done some egregious things, but he's com he's complex. 
and he's authentic and he compels us to make him want to follow him. That reminds me of Adam's complexity versus depth. So like, are you just adding more ingredients to the pot or are you actually going really in depth into like one specific thing? Is it like when you add a bunch of these other characters, like in wheel of time, you have a lot of complexity. We have a lot of things that are technically happening, but we don't have depth with any of them. When you don't have depth, and the more complexity you add, the harder it is to go deep. Um, yeah, absolutely. And so this is a point that I remember at one point, I don't remember if it was John or someone, but I remember someone arguing that essentially every story should be life and death. Like when you get down to it, the stage yeah. should be so high that it's life and death. And I think a way to like help people wrap their heads around it is that it doesn't have to be like a physical death. It can be a death of something that really, really, that would be like catastrophic in a major way for this person. Like yes. Seinfeld, the death of a is marriage. Life and death. Seinfeld yep. is life and death. It is life and death to George that he get the right gift for the party, right, or yes. whatever it is. That's right. You know, like. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like they, they have, have to, to feel it. like it would be death for this yeah. not to, to go through. Absolutely, great point. Okay. Step of the Again, dream, yeah. the, with this question about Wheel of Time, would it be easier to build authentic characters when there's a successful source novel to draw upon? Yeah, but the problem with that, the novel is kind of difficult to adapt because 80% of the character development is internal monologue. And it's a book where you have all these people, all these viewpoints, we're learning about Moraine's history, all the thoughts she has. It's very interesting what happens juxtaposed with their thoughts. But how the fuck do you adapt that? Yeah, that's yeah. where you have to think about if something is is adaptable and how much yes. you would have to change it to make it a good adaptation. Because I've always heard it said, and I think that this is true: books are thoughts. Books is like inner life. Plays are dialogue, and films action. And oh, so, like if it. you're moving from a book to a play or a book to film, you have to think. Does is there a version of the story that is still compelling and is still the same story that does not rely on this character's in life, like being told to us to, through thoughts? And some things, like maybe Wheel of Time, you would have to add, you would have to change quite a bit to make up for the fact that we aren't going to get your inner monologue and a voiceover the whole time. You know, like you have to change stuff in order to still have the same depth that the book does. And it's a risk to do that when there's such a big fan base that wants it the exact same way as the original material. Um, yeah, and then Theo said it here. The problem is what works in a book internally doesn't always work in a show visually. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's a very, you, I mean, that's smart. Yeah, you, it's a very delicate thing to hit. And then I would agree with this here. Uh, I think Foundation worked very well with introducing several characters and making us care about them. Yeah, I'd say The Expanse did a similar thing. You know, there's there's shows that do, Little Miss Sunshine, there's ensemble casts that do work. It's not necessarily that they don't work. It's that you don't want to spread it out so much that you lose depth with right. the characters you care about. In Foundation, there's only a couple characters that we are really deeply invested in and everybody else is meant to be in the world but not our emotional investment you know we're seeing the whole situation with the what's it called what's empire we're seeing it through the one of them's eyes yeah um we're not seeing it we don't care as much about the other perspectives of empire we care about this one um so and I to think compare that, yeah. it to another yeah. fantasy book, The Witcher, which was just adapted for Netflix. Three storylines, three characters interweaving. It's all about those three people. It's all about uh, that's it. Is it good? I, I read something it's, about this. I, if, once you get to episode two, it's really good. I, like, think they I, did I actually really like it. It's John. It would be a fantasy series you'd be like because it's all about sex, violence, really fucked up shit happening to people, incest, torture, horrible <laughs> stuff. It's my world. It's my world. 
It's your stuff. It's it's oh it, God, it, 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 it has it has the gritty, gritty, horrible reality of human beings just doing horrible things to each other. Not it's not the monsters, it's the people thing, you know. Who, who who's in it? Uh Henry Cavill's the lead. And he does a very good oh. job. It's um, it was uh one of Netflix's biggest shows, yeah. And season two just came out today. So Maxim asked the question, the skilled and creative writer find a way to externalize the thoughts in inner worlds, no? Yes. However, yes, yes. you have to wonder at like at what point is it now a different story? And how much does the fan base care? And how much are people gonna let you get away with adding stuff to externalize right. it? Like in if you had what movie was it that we were just talking about? Or the one show? Um Wheel of Time. Adam doesn't like. Yeah. If you had Wheel of Time and you had all the space in the world to do an adaptation that you could do anything with, you could absolutely make the same loose plot compelling. But because there's certain things that the writer has done that work with inner dialogue that you would have to change in order to make it visual, people would be too ups like it it would veer too far from the original material like there's a version that works but it'd be it'd be very different so just to end on this note i think this is actually an example exactly what we were talking about because i know a change they made from the books to the show to make it more dramatic and it totally rings hollow so there's this character perrin um and in the books he's an 18 year old virgin who's just really big he's a blacksmith his um his sisters die in a fire and that's why he leaves and goes on the journey right um in the show, everybody's aged up to 25 so they can have sex with each other. Um, he has a wife, and in the pilot, he kills her accidentally. And he's grappling with the guilt of, I've killed my wife. On paper, that wor- that works, but like, they, it doesn't, it's a different character. It's a totally different inner diet, like, and the same plot points and situations don't really make sense for him. It's kind wow. of like, it's a it's one of those changes where it's sort of like actually that doesn't really it didn't work. It especially like I thought as someone who has no emotional int- like I have no emotional connection to this material. I don't know anything about the original books. I'd never read any of it, don't whatever. When he did that, I was like, that's a really interesting character choice. And then Carl and Adam both were like, I don't I don't like that at all. Because you're actually like you're and you're probably the main audience honestly is like people who care about this kind of a thing and it's not working Weirdo. for you you know it, well, you it was too the, much of a change you aren't into reading a 14 novel 14 book series each 800 pages long no <laughs> gee i'm probably not this weekend <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note um you have anything else you want to say john uh, do we have any more questions no no it's fun to be back great to talk to you guys and um uh you know Alexi and adam get back to me let me know if if you think that idea has any any uh like it's a great idea you just have to like your, your mate your only thing you have to make sure is that you're not being sexist that's the only thing you have to make well, sure I mean, right. by, by the way i you know i that's you're absolutely that's a legitimate question and and it's one of the questions as i've been designing the thing right um uh but because not, here's the thing, way, it's like, there's a, to- I'm not it's sure totally it legitimate. The subject is totally convinced, like infidelity, uh, the distrust in marriage, sort of the fear of lot losing financial stability. Uh, that's like a great, and the, the dishwasher lipstick thing. I love that. I think that's like such a great seed for the story. It just really depends on what you want to say, you know? Yeah. I, I, as I said, I, I, I have found the theme, um, and and I'm, I don't want to talk about because I'm curious to know what people will will what they think the theme is. But uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's just a blast working on it. It's awesome. Fun. We're gonna we're gonna definitely share it out and we're gonna okay. talk about it. That'd be a really cool experience. That'd you know what's one variation that I just thought of? What? If it's it's a completely different movie, but if it's a kid who finds it and thinks that one of their parents is being unfaithful to the other way, oh that's, that's a totally a great, different story yeah that's a, that's a great that's by the way that's a great idea because then that's, that's an actually, that's an innocent that's viewpoint that you can judge people time. you can judge the parents harder 
we'll also, yeah. yeah, I mean, Alexi, that's, I like that better than my idea. Uh, hey. <laughs> because, because now the vulnerability of the child um, and what they must do. Shit. You know, think about it. Okay, think about here's it. a crazy. What? <laughs> oh no, it's a go. I, I just. Um, well, let's see. I I love that idea. I love that idea. Again, I, I'm repeating myself. This is one of the beautiful things about story and creativity: is you take that lipstick on glass and boom where you want to i love adams he the husband is dressing up i love the daughter or son finds the you know um you can go anywhere but uh, hopefully what hopefully what i can bring to this when when i when we share the uh, document the short story um is what is that creative process did i ask the right questions and did I answer the right questions in the, in the development of the story? Yeah. All about it, man. Absolutely. Okay. On that I'm, note, I'm very time. excited to read it. We're one but minute yeah. over time. <clears throat> so thank you. Guys. Uh, so next week is most next week is Christmas. And I didn't know. Um, you didn't um, know Christmas happened. Oh, you know, there is a Christmas, right? It's a, wait, they're not canceling it in Kentucky. They it's don't day, it's Christmas, Christmas Eve, Christmas you know? Eve, Christmas Eve. 24. No, I say happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'm canceling happy Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs> no, it's so we could do it next week. The next thing we're going to do, though, is we were planning on doing carding and going in depth into like a technique yeah. for carding. So that'll be next class. I guess me and Adam have to talk about if we're going to do it on we'll do it. Christmas Eve or not. I'm not doing anything else. John, I don't have a life, you know, Christmas Eve. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.